Hey you guys, I'm Eric. And I'm Caitlin. And we're uh, your OTs from Warfighter Engage. Um, we want to do a quick video today just to kind of show you some of the versatility of the Xbox Adaptive Controller and kind of some of the things that you can do. Um, if uh, you heard us speak before, we always like to talk about the potential for video games as they relate to, to two things. One, how can we make gaming more accessible? for people in general. So we're going to show a little bit of that. And then the second thing we always like to uh, look at is how can I actually use video games in a therapeutic um, kind of setting? Like how would I be able to use it therapeutically for patients? So that'll be another thing that we're going to talk about um, in this kind of video series. So um, what you see in front of us right now is, of course, this is the Xbox Adaptive Controller. Um, Caitlin, you want to kind of talk a little bit about this and tell people what it is? So this is the Xbox Adaptive Controller, um, it was just released this past May, um, and essentially what this is is a tool for um, people to be able to plug in different external um, hardware, plugins, buttons, and um, joysticks to allow them to build out their own controller based on what works for them. Um, so here we have a couple of um, switches made by Warfighter Engage, and um, due to the versatility of this product, Players can really pick anything they want to be able to plug into here and build out a controller for them. Yeah, so what we'll do is uh, we're going to do a couple scenarios where, um, you know, Caitlin and I will take turns being either a patient or whatnot, and we'll talk about how you can use it and how quickly you can kind of roll in and out of things uh, if you make a mistake or if you decide you want to do something different. So, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to play some Halo, um, and we will... Um, start here in a second, and what we'll start with is just doing a um, maybe a patient who doesn't have use of one arm. How about we do that? Um, and we'll say that it's their right arm, so they'll be losing the trigger, um, and um, and then we'll give them some other controls um, to go along. So what we're also going to use during this is we're going to use Copilot. So right here is the um, Xbox Elite controller. So with it, I'll give Caitlin some control of the character, um, but I'll also be using some of it. So as you see, when we use this, we're gonna grade the activity um, to make the patient successful. And I wanna make sure that they're able to engage just as much as they would be um, in a normal game. And so maybe that's just me doing a little bit extra for her. And as she gets better, then we'll kind of look at different ways that we can start having her engage with it. So, okay, so as you can see, we're gonna be playing Halo. Uh, so Caitlin's gonna have no use in her right hand. So Caitlin, why don't we do a setup so you're using uh, the right trigger, um, so that'll be your shooting. And we're gonna do it what, on your foot, you think? We'll yep. do it on your feet? Okay, so grab, you wanna grab the extensions and then we'll, okay, so we have a, a two, um, the cool thing about this is you can make any kind of setup you want. So Caitlin's got a, a two button uh, switch right now that we're gonna put down by her feet and she'll operate, and we'll put grenades on the other one. You want to put grenades on the other one? Yeah. Um, so we're going to just um, simple like undo them, and here I'll grab those. You can put that one on the floor, and I'll get you set up. So um, we're just going to plug them right into the back of the Zac. Um, so we're going to have our right trigger, which is right here, and then we're going to have our left bumper, uh, which is right here. And that should be... Uh, the, the firing and the grenade, so that's what we'll use them for. So what we're going to do is I'm going to play using co-pilot, using movements and aiming, and she's going to be shooting for me. So here we go, Halo. Alright, so which one we got? Alright, so right now my uh, right button is shoot and on my left is throw a grenade. All right. So, now we kind of got it. So, all right, so I'm going to aim and move, and she's going to do the rest. Got any more grenades? Nope. Any more? All right, we're, I'm going to come up and melee this guy. So there's a lot of things going on right now. Both physically I'm using my feet to shoot, um, but also cognitively I need to know when is appropriate to shoot and when isn't appropriate to shoot. 
based on what I'm seeing on the screen. Right, now, Caitlin has the triggers and the grenades. Go ahead and shoot that thing. So let's shoot these things in the sky. I think they like make them, um, they heal them. So let's get rid of those guys. So again, I'm aiming, she's using the triggers. To, uh, let's throw a grenade over there. Awesome. Alright, let's keep going. There you go. Maybe another one. There's two of them there now. So anyway, so that's a good kind of idea of like how you could potentially use, um, you know, this for like a game like Halo, right? So if you have a first person shooter or somebody that really likes stuff like that, that might be something you want to be able to do. But um, one thing that we actually recently realized, we were using the Zach with a patient who had a stroke and he wasn't quite cognitively ready to be able to jump into Halo, yeah? And so we kind of did a, um, a different approach. So in OT, um, in occupational therapy, we do something that we call grading the activity. And grading the activity simply means making something easier um, to fit their level um, or harder to challenge them. And so in this particular situation, if you have a gamer, we might want to grade the activity to make it just a little bit easier um, so that's something that they're successful with. And ultimately, we want them to find success um, but also challenge them therapeutically. So we're going to switch to another game and we'll uh, kind of switch it up and I'll be the patient, Caitlin will be the therapist, and we will um, kind of demonstrate that. All right. So as Eric was saying, if you have a patient who's maybe not quite ready or cognitively intact to play a game like Halo, we can downgrade the activity. Um, so we're going to play a game called Shred It. Um, and right now, Eric is going to be the patient, and he has a flaccid left arm, so no use of his left arm. Um, so for now, I'm going to steer the character, and we're going to have Eric do jump and duck with his right foot. So I'm going to plug in these into the A and B ports. I also have a cognition issue, so. Um, I do have use my right hand, but right now we're just going to focus on two tasks. And that'll just be us jumping and ducking. Alright, so, so I'm trying to figure out my controls. So right now, can you pause it real quick? Um, so my controls are actually swapped, so can you um, swap that A and B for me real quick. Now you can do this in game. Um, the cool thing again about the Zach is that I don't have to do anything crazy. I just literally have to change a couple buttons and then we can go from there. All right, I'm ready. All right, so I could have played with it that way, but I want to jump with my right and duck with my left. So I'm using my feet to be able to do that. Now Caitlin's steering, so obviously uh, I don't have control over that because I would have missed that rock, but hey, you know. Just, let, let's try it one more time. I feel like right now she's the patient, maybe. <laughs> All right, we're going to do better this time. So I like this game Shred It because it's a simple game, it's simple tasks, um, it's visually great, um, it's very beautiful, um, and I don't have to worry about too many things here. I can literally just focus on a couple things and just find success in that. So if I'm looking at a game for somebody who um, we just need to get some kind of success, maybe this would be a good option. All right, and, uh, and so I'm doing pretty well, and I think that at this point, you know, maybe Caitlin starts to see like, hey, he's doing pretty decent. Um, All right, so 
like Eric said, if he's starting to do really well, I could add another component or another thing for him to control as well. Um, so right now I'm going to add this joystick in here. I'm going to have Eric steer the character as well in addition to um, doing the jump and the, the slide. Um, I know you're th what you're thinking is like, why does your left arm work, Eric? Um, so by the way, this is Dyson. It's just a kind of a sticky material that you know sometimes people use in you know kitchens to open jars or whatever. OTs use it all the time just to keep things in place. Um, and so we have this here. So if I'm pushing this joystick, it doesn't just like fall off the side of the table. So all right, so we're going to do this now. So now I'm going to again we're grading the activity. Um, so now I'm going to use the controller and I'm going to jump. So, all right, but I need, can you start for me? No, no but you could have just pushed P. That's cool. I'll start from the beginning. All right, so, all right, back and forth, okay. So, um, so, yeah, this is kind of, I haven't played this one with the stick yet. So, um, one thing to, to note, um, and we talk about this a lot, not everybody's going to have the exact same setup. Um, so, sometimes you'll find that your setup is going to kind of vary depending on um, what your specific deficits are. So, um, if this didn't work for me and maybe I needed to, you know, push this out somewhere else, you know, I would kind of look for those options. Alright, so I said earlier that one of the things that we like to do is use video games therapeutically. And this is a cool way that you can use the Zach uh, therapeutically and you can kind of take some of our ideas and you can pretty much go anywhere from it. So what we're going to do is, so pa uh, Caitlin could be a patient who had just had a hip fracture or um, a multiple trauma where she's trying to get back to standing. Um, a lot of things that we do in OT is what we call functional mobility. So functional mobility essentially is how do you use your body within kind of a, a space that's important to you. So, um, for example, if I was in a kitchen and I needed to make a sandwich, I would need to kind of move around like this and kind of shuffle around and stuff like that. So PT will do a lot of walking and gait and OT will do a lot of things where it's like interacting with your environment. So one thing that I want to work on with uh, Caitlin as my patient is going to be functional mobility, right? So we're going to work on endurance, standing tolerance, balance, weight shift, all those type of things. Um, so she's got use of both her arms um, and she's got use of both of her legs, but she has a really hard time being able to stand for any amount of time. So we're going to engage her in purposeful activity so that maybe she can stand for a little bit longer, all right? So on top of that, I'm going to set up a scenario where she has to reach to be able to get things done. So um, again, we're going to grab our two button uh, system over here. Do you want to put this one over here? Put this one over here. Can you reach over there on that one? So we're going to have you stand in the middle. All right. So again, as a OT, I'll probably um, actually let's put the stick over here for you to move, um, and we'll take one of these. Uh, um, Okay, we're gonna put the stick on one side and then we're gonna put the button on the other side. How about that? That sound good? Alright, so I'm gonna pull those off. So these are just extensions for different cords. Um, you can get them on Amazon or wherever you want. So I'm actually gonna put this guy um, so that I can make this a little bit challenging for her. We're gonna put that in one and then we're gonna put the button, uh, we'll take the other extension. And the button is going to be, what is the right trigger fire? All right, right trigger fire. All right, so, all right, so we're going to play um, just a simple side scroller that's kind of like a run and gun type, um, you know, shoot em game. Um, and I'm going to have Caitlin, all right, I want you to reach a little bit further that way. So she, all she has to do is push the button constantly for this one, and then can you reach over here? All right, so, um, so I'll tell you what, we'll, we're gonna do this where you can start here, and then I'm gonna move you to the side as we go. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I still have co-op on, but I'm gonna challenge her to do what she can do um, with this.
so again, the cool thing here is that she's so immersed in the game that maybe she doesn't think that, uh, or that she doesn't remember that this is actually being therapeutic for her. So again, we like to use purposeful activity to help um, engage people, right? So obviously if I was uh, working with a real patient, I'd probably have a gate belt on. I'd be kind of stabilizing her. I could be kind of back here, back here and kind of making sure that she's moving. So like if I wanted her to kind of go a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left, I would kind of gauge that. All right, so now maybe in the middle of the game, I'm gonna, you know, just, we're gonna push uh, pause for a second. Um, and then I'm gonna say, hey, you know what? Let's do this. Let's now put some more pressure on your right side. So I'm gonna bring this guy out here and I want you to kind of lean a little bit more to your right now, okay? All right, and you ready? Mm -hmm. And here we go. All right, so now it's going to be a little more challenging, and again, I'm going to have her kind of figure different things out. Good. All right, so anyway, you, you kind of get the idea. So um, at the end of the day, too, um, one thing that I thought would be really neat for the Zach is maybe even doing a frame where you build like a PVC pipe thing, and then if, if we needed to, we could like, hey, I want you to push that to get there and push this button over here. And I can just basically build out whatever I needed to on that. So um, throwing some Velcro on there, whatever, you know, we could use this, you know, in so many different ways, so. Yeah. There's a lot of potential, both therapeutically and just in general um, for this. Yeah. Yeah, so um, again, the versatility is a big, big part of this. Um, being able to just stop what you're doing, um, push pause real quick, change a switch out, and then do it a different way. Um, there's all kinds of different options in. All right, so guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We really appreciate your time. And uh, Caitlin, anything you wanna say in the last words? Yeah, stay tuned. We're gonna be putting out more content and videos showing you guys all the, the potentials of this in the clinic setting. Yeah, awesome, and if you have any kind of ideas of games that you might want us to try or play, um, uh, we, we're gonna put out a very separate video that talks about Copilot and how you can use that very uh, effectively in your gaming. So, um, you know, throw in the comments below uh, something that you might want us to play or a, a condition that maybe a patient has that you want, want us to address and we'll do what we can to uh, show you how to use it. So thanks guys. Thanks.